Uh, looks like we have a quorum, so uh, at, uh, at 33. All right, uh, is there any adjustments to the agenda? All right, I see no adjustments. Uh, we'll move on to consent agenda. Uh, looking to approve the minutes from uh, Tuesday, March 7th, and from Monday, March 20th, the special regular meeting and special meeting. So approve, move. And is there a second? Jessica seconds. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, the minutes pass. Do you have any public comment? Okay, moving on to board comment. Okay, great. Let's get to the good stuff then, the celebration of learning. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Lenahan, to Sean, and um, he's got a little presentation, five, six science and three, four, but five, six uh, did earthquake houses. And I'm gonna turn it over to him and let him a little bit more. Great. You're muted, Sean. And we've got Callie. Good evening, everybody. Sorry for that delay. Um, I'm Sean Lenan. For those that don't know me, and I have my daughter Callie here with me. I hope we sound okay. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So one of the projects we did this year. I'll just give you some brief introduction, and if you have questions, you could ask Callie. Um, one of the uh, highlights of the year, I thought, was when we took one of our science standards for earth science and turned it into a STEM engineer project. So I've done this with older kids before, so it was really cool to challenge these elementary kids to do it, and they really did a fantastic job. So I do have a tab I can present just to show off, um, just so you can see what we did, and let me know if it's coming through on your end. I will sharing my tab now do you see anything it's coming up okay let me know when you can see that got it okay so oh sorry this is where we start we started with our research on earthquakes using some real-time data this is the usgs website here so we kind of start there build some of the curiosity into it and allow them to kind of play around with real real data um I'm gonna now share you the tab I have for the actual buildings. So let's see if this works. Sorry for the delay. All right, it should show up now. Hopefully. Yep. Okay, so if it allows me to change that tab slightly. Okay, do you see what we can see? Yes. All right, cool. So once I learn about earthquakes, we start talking about the engineering process. Humans have built cities in some pretty seismic areas. So we talk about how to retrofit and build them. And then we start the design process. So we worked in teams that kind of found compatible, compatible partners that had the same vision. We start with spaghetti sticks and very limited supplies. They have a budget where they have to design a house with the least amount of supplies that can withstand certain Richter earthquakes. And so they start to come together. Um, kids had a lot of fun with this part. I wasn't sure how well the five, the five six would step to this challenge, but they really did. Oh. Uh, and then this is what they come out with. We sort of turns it into a steam project. They really wanted to design them. Um, some kids put little like little doll pieces in them just to see how things would shake around in there. And, 
And then I don't know how well this will come through, but I do have a video <laughs> and I'm going to try to share it and we'll see if I can play part of it. Yeah. What's All right, here we go. See if I can get this to work. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna show you a quick clip of that. Uh, sorry, give me like a couple more seconds here to find this. I do, thought I had it queued, but it doesn't want to play. Oh, here we go. Do you guys see a video playing? It's uh, starting. It's, uh, oh, here we go. You're muted. You're muted. Okay, you hear me? Uh, the ones that did survive, we threw some tsunamis at. I have some really good videos, but they don't really want to load, sadly. But we did throw tsunamis at them outside, and the kids had a lot of fun just destroying their creations. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the fun highlights of it. Um, I'll, I'll turn it over to Callie if you just want to ask her anything about the process. I tried to get a few other students to zoom in but wasn't successful and i'll stop presenting All right. i could go get addy if you want yeah if addy wants to share <laughs> yeah kelly i do have a question for you yeah what is it did you did this teach you any anything about where the safest place is during an earthquake um one was it underground or uh, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, you know, as a Vermonters, I don't think we did to talk about how, what to do in an earthquake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just how to I was design thinking by watching the buildings, you know, whether because sometimes it's not safe being outside when the buildings are falling down. Um, because when looking at your table, it looked like being outside of of an unsafe building near an unsafe buildings. It didn't look like that was very safe. <laughs> we watched a lot of old earthquake footage. I just, my heart's in the 1989 San Francisco one. So we talked a lot about that. That one happened on my birthday. <laughs> I remember watching the World Series when that happened. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, Kelly, I'm, this is Mr. Canarney. Yeah. Great job. I'm just curious if you had any aha moments throughout the design process. Was there a certain component of the design that seemed to up, like uphold the, the earthquake more than another? Um, yeah, there was, who was their partner this was again? I think you with Shay. Oh, I was with Shay. Shay did a lot of the build the the building part. Um, I got materials and designs, but she did most of the building. So, not me. what what about when all the houses that survived and didn't survive? What made some of those houses survive? What did some of the people come up with? The way the sticks were, like or. Like the sticks, the not the sticks, the noodles were placed in some great spots that would hold it up better. And the the base of the the structure, some had um what was it called? Base. Which of an eye. Wait, wait, in the wait. Isolators. Uh, an isolator, base isolator. Explain to them what a base isolator it's is. It's like on springs. And it instead of 
moving the house violently, it moves the springs, right? You can yeah. talk. You can talk. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Tally, did yours survive? Yes, it actually did. Yeah. Oh, good. That's exciting. Shay stomped on it. When <laughs> yeah. After hours, some got wrecked. Yes. Well, that sounds like an exciting project to really bring what you're learning to life in front of you. Yes, it it really was. I love, this, I love the tsunami part where people <laughs> yeah. failed just just to throw a bucket of water at it, so they threw it up against the wall instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, some houses were built so strong the tsunami wouldn't take it down, so they just wound up throwing it against the <laughs> the wall. <laughs> Unbreakable. It's like <laughs> it's like <laughs> just threw the bucket at it. Yeah, yeah. So did Holly. That's very exciting. Thank you so much for uh, for presenting that, and uh, that sounds like a lot of a lot of great learning happening. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, you can go now. <laughs> thank you, Callie. Daddy was you, pretty shy. <laughs> yes, that took a lot there. That took a lot there. Yeah. Uh, yes, it did. I know. Yeah, I, I couldn't get Addie to come. Serious girl talk right there. So <laughs> <laughs> I owe her one. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. That's that's nice really shot. exciting. I'm, I'm so, like I said, I think, um, you know, th that bringing it to life right in front of their eyes really. I will stick with them for a long time. I mean, even, you know, you may not have been there teaching them about tsunamis, but I guarantee they're all going to remember what a tsunami is. You yeah, know? Sure. <laughs> well, sure. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Keep up the hard work. I know how hard you guys work. Much oh, appreciate God, all you. of your, all of your time and energy into trying to make this all work. Thank you. Right, thanks. thanks. Much respect. Have a good night. Thank you, you too. Excellent. Um, we will move on to uh, superintendent's report. <clears throat> so you have my report in hand. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, my voice is cooked. <laughs> the um, legislative updates that I wanted to um, orally report on in case folks had questions are the same big three I've been talking about. Um, universal meals may cross over, um, and I had spoken about it, this at the full board. Right now, there's still not a funding mechanism outside of the Ed Fund to fund universal meals. So what that means is it's a projected tax increase beginning um, next year, possibly, of three cents on the tax rate. They do expect probably to have another Ed Fund surplus, so they may decide to utilize some of the Ed Fund surplus to offset that complete three cents. But wow. moving forward, what we should expect is Universal Meals is gonna result in a change in the yield that equates to an increase of three cents. And I expect it to go up from there. Um, the, That's big. so you folks may say, well, what could they do different? They could put, uh, a regressive tax on it, like a sugar tax, to help offset some of the expense of universal meals. Um, they could also split um, the funding mechanism and also have it come out of the general fund. Um, and so, in regards to health and human services, how do you think about meals supporting all families? Um, it doesn't seem to have traction there yet. So. Anyways, that may cross over. Um, we'll wait and see what the, fun the funding mechanism is. I also think we're going to wait and see, um, does it actually get signed on by the governor? He hasn't come out and said he's going to veto it, but he's definitely said that he thinks there needs to be a look at the funding mechanisms for it. <clears throat> so that's universal meals. Pre-K made it from crossover from the Senate to the House, that is essentially a study committee, is what it is on pre-K, um, for a recommendation for next year. There was some talk that the House Ag Committee, now that they have the bill, 
may look at amending it to include the caveat of those schools who offer full day pre-K for four-year-olds five days a week, we get to count those students as a 1.0, which would benefit our district. That's not in the current uh, proposal <laughs> no. from coming over from the Senate? No. Hmm. Uh, but the House Ed has heard um, from districts saying, we're already doing this. It'd be really great to have the Ed funding formula linked to the fact that we're doing it. Yeah. Um, so there seems to be, that would seem to be well received from the House Aid Committee. So um, the House Ed Chair literally said that is something that they're going to look at. And that would happen before a, a bill, the right. Water Study yes. Committee that, that could Well, it could happen this, this year, yeah, for next right. year, yeah, or the year after. They're reconciling the bills. So the bills that got passed from the Senate are now in the House, and the House reviewing them and deciding if they want to amend them at all. And saying the bills that passed the House are now in the Senate, and they're doing the same thing. So that's the other bill, which is was originally S66. Senate did not move S66. The House moved their version, which is H2 something something that I've sent you. 284. I think. 280 what? No? I think 284. Yeah, I think you're right, or 248. The um, so that bill did make it out. <laughs> of the, uh, the house. Uh, and so what does that bill do? What that bill does is leave school choice in place. That bill uh, provides assurances that if a school is to receive a public dollar and a public funded student, that that receiving independent school is going to assure access to special education, as an example. Ensure that there's going to be uh, no discrimination within their, their school system. <laughs> Assure that the test scores are going to get reported to the sending LEA and posted on their website like we do. Um, assure that they're not going to charge um, a family who's decided to send their kids to school a different rate than a public school pays. <coughs> so right now, a lot of independent schools will provide scholarship is what they tend to call it for a family paying into a school system. But in general, that's then being funded through the public school tuition dollar. Um, and one of the things I've struggled with since being the superior is even receiving independent independent schools waiving tuition for <clears throat> two years while a student attends there under scholarship, and then starting to charge tuition grades nine through twelve. But meanwhile, the sending public school lost their average daily membership for two years, um, which is a pen penalty there. And in general, <laughs> um, if you're given scholarship, that funding has to be made up somewhere. So I would argue it probably gets made up in the announced tuition um, for 9 through 12. Is there a specific um, mechanism for that announced tuition? Is there a cap that independent schools have to abide by at this point? Um, not all independent schools. So the traditional four historical schools, St. Jay, Burn Burton, TA, and um, Lynn Institute can announce like public schools, as well as starting last year, TSA. Mm -hmm. um, and so there, the cap is, is the AOE has that equation that you heard me talk about. It's a 6% range around what announced tuition is versus allowable mm -hmm. tuition. Although the agency, um, Tara, do we even have last year's yet? Sorry, what was that? Has the agency announced the allowable tuitions versus announced for last year? Oh, yet? no. Nope. Like, Not the finals. So you get backlogged. Um, bandwidth at the agency right now is the other thing that I talked about. Um, at the full board meeting, and I don't see it getting any better um, in the regards to Secretary French announced that he was moving on, um, and they've lost um, several of their leads in their, throughout their division ranks um, in the last month. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the big thing is, and something we'll continue to talk about, certainly Tara and I talk about, um, is Brad James has announced that he is retiring in December 
and and Brad really for a long time now has been the backbone financially for the state in regards to the end fund. Wow. Um, and he's leaving in December. Um, like all the calculations we get for equalized pupils and for the waiting study that's passed and it's coming in to place and the block grants for special ed, Brad's the guy that computes all those algorithms and testifies on them and, and, and says this is what they should be. So his moving on is going to be um, also something that I think is um, just we got to keep our eye on and, and it is a worry for me. There's a lot of uncertainty, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. That's tough. The good news is, because um, I got to end with good news, <laughs> is that um, I do feel like we, we're going to be in as good a place as anybody to implement the new standardized assessment system. Um, our, our <coughs> testing coordinators at the buildings, our principals, Ray and Honda Adams have done a great job of rolling this out. I feel as prepared as we possibly could be. Um, just know that that has also not been um, seamless. Like that, the agency has a real struggle, has had a real struggle rolling this new assessment system out. Um, question and then uh, uh, another positive thing. The question I guess is, is It seems to me that we've got the, the talent pool for the <laughs> Secretary of Education um, comes from our Vermont superintendents. And um, that's our, you know, we've got a lot of talent around. And so <clears throat> there is the Vermont Superintendents Association at all, because it's um, be something that could be fulfilling for the. the the candidate and also um, make a huge difference in effective leadership for all schools and all districts and all supervisory unions. So I'm just, is there any work on the- I think there are some the work behind the enough? scenes. Um, I think they're planning to possibly go with an interim for a while. Um, I think one of the concerns is in the education ranks, of course, the Secretary of Education is appointed by the governor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's become much more of a political position in the sense of if the mm -hmm. governorship is to change. It, in a sense, it has been appointed anyways. Typically, what has resulted in it is the incoming governor, especially if, if the governorship changed um, party, that the secretary position would be <laughs> in jeopardy. So there's some worry, I think, in the agency right now about whether or not, I think if, if Governor Scott was to come out and publicly say, yes, he's going to run again, that would help mm -hmm. solicit um, some real strong candidates for the secretary position. I think without that coming out and saying that, it would be, it's, it's a challenge about who would want to apply because <laughs> it could be a real short post. <laughs> The uh, good news it was the um, Vermont School Board Association uh, announcement that they have found a successor to Phil Gore yeah. as director of development. And that's just a key position to, to help spread how we can be effective boards and board members and uh, carry out our role and maximize um, the opportunity to, to do the right job. And um, I just started to read <laughs> resume and, and look into it, but a cursory look looked like we've got a very talented individual, uh, and she's also been a teacher, I think, and a school board member, but she goes way beyond that in international and national um, responsibilities, and she's also created her own a company, and so she's got an entrepreneurship sense sensibility, so I, um, I'm cautiously hopeful that We've got somebody that can help help us uh, keep moving forward. Great, thank you. Uh, is there any more um, any questions for the superintendent? Okay, we'll move on to the principal's report. 
So you have my report right there. Um, I think the big highlights are that we just sent home second trimester report cards. So it's the second time using our um, proficiency-based or standards-based report card. And we'll be working to send out a survey to gather parent and teacher feedback. Um, we also had the second round of parent-teacher conferences in the spring. Those just finished up uh, last Thursday. But other than that, it's full speed ahead. There's uh, this where it goes really fast mm. <laughs> from this point forward. And we're starting to gear up for our next round of track my progress assessments yeah. as well as state testing. Great. Any questions for the principal? Report. Okay. Uh, business manager, Tara. Tara? She had dropped off and just came back, so I don't know if she's having internet issues. Can you guys hear me? Now I can, yes. Okay, sorry, yeah, my internet keeps booting me out today for some reason. So you all have my report. It outlines what's happening in the business office during the month of April. Um, in addition to that, we have two projects Currently on our horizon, we are converting the supervisory union software from ProFund into Infinite Visions, which is the same software system that we've used for the district since 2018. So we'll only be operating out of one software, which will make everything easier. And we're also we are uh, reworking our onboarding process um, and how it goes through the different uh, layers within the business office, as well as with Christy with contracts and Ray with onboarding. So we're working on that as a team and we'll hopefully have that up and running uh, by the end of this week. And then if there's any questions. Great. Um, just ahead, could though. you explain a little further on the, the, the last bullet, reworking onboarding process for new hires? Are you talking about new teachers or new staff at, at the central administrative office? Uh, <laughs> and what does it mean to be reworking? So our process before was cumbersome. So they would meet with Christy, then they would meet with Lisa, then they would have to come back and meet with Lisa. So we're working through trying to get it more efficient for staff as they come on. It's for all staff, it's teachers, support staff, anybody that we hire throughout the supervisory union, substitute teachers, um, and really just trying to make that process more smoothly so they're not having to have so many touch points multiple times throughout <laughs> onboarding. And Tara, are you the the uh, the captain of this team? I am the captain of the business office team. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. That makes a lot of sense. Great. Is there any other questions for Tara? Okay, we'll move on to uh, policy committee. Uh, reading the second special education policy. Essentially the same one you had last uh, month. The just a reminder: the um, last month you had um, this policy and the board's uh, board member civility policy. That has uh, gone back in the committee with some pretty significant um, revisions, and so that was not ready to come out of committee yet. The committee wanted to take some time to read it, give feedback, and I expect that a draft will come back out of committee. When the full when the policy committee meets on <laughs> April 17th. Um, but this one, um, unless there's like all of a sudden any change, we are warning it for action at the full board starting on the 17th and in, in all the subsequent meetings after that. Okay. Does anybody have any um, questions or concerns regarding the special education policy? It's pretty boilerplate. Yeah, great. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to the full board update. Um, I can say a little bit. Jamie kind of has talked about he at the uh, SU meeting. He gave a similar update to what was happening in um, the Senate <coughs> and the House with the bills. Um, there was some good updates from um, our MTSS uh, chief executive officer. I wrote down a little note. They, we're talking about a set of phonics tools that are available to teachers um, as other options for um, 
for for teachers to use and um, let's see and showed critical proficiency and performance indicators for um, each group of kids uh, k2 <coughs> and uh, three five etc so some uh, reporting out of some uh, proficiencies and, and performances um, the director of special services gave a uh, update um, of going well. That's what I wrote for no, it's I think that was the sentiment that everything was going really well and there was nothing. You know, rule changes are tough. Yeah. Um, and I, I appreciate Annette giving a glimpse to the board each month on what some of those rule changes are, but you know, essentially what the legislature did to get at <coughs> requiring schools to have a comprehensive system, MTSS, which is in statute, their way of going about ensuring that it was going to be implemented was to then tie it to qualification <laughs> around special education. So unless the school system implements a truly comprehensive response to intervention, a system where our kids' data is being monitored on a regular cycles, that we're implementing targeted interventions with fidelity, a team can't qualify a student for special ed services. So it's really making certain that all levels of the system are working together uh, collaboratively. It's no longer special ed and, and regular ed, right? It's we're all working on the same team here, hand in hand. And if we're not, then the law really gets at the heart of if you're not doing that, it's really challenging then to qualify for a student for special education. Yeah. Well, good. I sounds yeah. Sounds like so that's, the, that's what we should be doing. Should be agree. Right. I was always very supportive yeah. of that bill that yeah. I went through. I felt like it was gonna really hold schools accountable to early intervention and yeah. supports. Yeah, I um, recall what I get impressed with over over this team, you, you form and lead uh, and support is the positive nature. Um, it's so easy for in these jobs, wherever you are, to play the game. Ain't it just awful? And they can just ain't it just awful to death? Because there's new things and hurdles and dips and and uh, uh, things that, that get in the way and uh, block where you'd like to go. And I don't get a sense of that from your team. And I think from from everything I've seen and nothing is, is perfect, but that's to me is, is an example, illustration of a, a strong team. Uh, they got problems, uh, they're gonna deal with them, um, but it isn't playing that card. And I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Of not doing that and, and, and being positive and confident. Um, the uh, director of technology and communications um, updated um, about the hard work they've put in to the uh, new student testing platform. And because of the turnover in the state, there has not been a lot of support and training. So, um, that yeah, that was huge <laughs> that, uh, you know, that our tech team has really stepped up to really work hard at. at um, Getting, getting that moving forward for our students. Um, and then the calendar um, was presented. And so we have the calendar for next year. And the big news is that um, we were able to align uh, one the, the spring vacations, one with the more Southern tech schools and the other with the Northern <laughs> tech schools to help all students in our uh, system to be at least have one vacation with a sibling that's um, in our district schools. <laughs> That's what I got out of that. Well, you did a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, if there's no other updates on that, we will, or questions or comments, um, negotiation council update. Yeah, I, I missed it, but the good news is that there was agreement reached between um, the SU and our support personnel. And it was very, 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 Please, this is talking about a three-year contract, um, and I think I could possibly express this as four. To me, uh, this is another recognition that we've got a team that is working together. I've seen places where um, the, the <laughs> of, of uh, labor have just gone off, whatever, and uh, whether rationally or irrationally, and um, these are tough negotiations, tough in the sense that 
objectives and people are trying to strive to better themselves and their situation. But what I've seen here in my few uh, years of tenure is that uh, we have a way of coming together. And the glue of that is, in my mind, trust. And uh, it's another evidence, uh, sir, to your team and the good people throughout the whole system <laughs> working together. So we'll, um, I'm hopeful, actually, that we may be in a place, um, depending on timing, to possibly ratify at the next full board meeting and have breakouts. Um, that's my goal. Um, I worked over the weekend to finalize the document, and I've had a few sets of eyes on it now. Um, and so we're going to finish formatting here in the next day or two, and I'm hopeful I think that, that, um, that we can try to get it ratified sooner <laughs> or later. So. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Are there any questions in regards to the negotiations? Great. We'll move on to discussion items, uh, annual meeting preparation, and discussion regarding informational meeting time and date. I'm sorry, I wasn't at your last meeting when, when you discussed this a little bit when you approved the warning. Um, so the mailer is um, about ready to go to copy. We'll share a proof with people just to give a quick look. Um, a thank you to Lindy and Erica around all their hard work and Tara and the board had a nice letter um, of pulling that all together. Um, so I think we're going to be ready for it to go to printer to get a proof like maybe tomorrow. tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah, so that's exciting. But we'll share that out. Great. Um, so that's the mailer. And then the informational meeting. Um, I'm I'm I created a little wrench in this because I'm trying to get a, get away and truly get away um, for some time in April during April break. I have not gotten away <coughs> other than a couple of days around Christmas all year. And I can feel it um, a little bit. So um, this the informational meeting would be to essentially go over and have a dry run of our presentation that we will do under article, um, the article within the warning of reports to the board. Because remember, we're voting from the floor this year. And so what we've done in our other in-person meetings this year is gone over our entire presentation after that early, under that early article, and allowed for questions on the presentation and then taking every article after that. And, and people can ask questions again under each article, but it's really given them a whole preview of everything the budget is supporting. It allows us to tell a narrative of what the budget's supporting, what the, you know, how the CLA has impacted tax rates, um, and then allow people to digest that and ask questions about it before actually moving on to, all right, now we're gonna discuss the budget article. Um, it's allowed a, that informational meeting to kind of happen early in the meeting. That has served us well in all of our four votes to, um, previously. Just to clarify, you're saying the informational part of the meeting is the same night as the vote. You're just doing it earlier. You're not doing it as, as a separate. Um, well, it's, it's early in the meeting agenda. Yeah. It's okay. underneath. I, I don't have your warning in front of you. It yeah. could be Article 2 or Article 3 is to hear reports of the board. Mm -hmm. Under that article, we've asked the moderator to ask permission for the principal, for Tara and to I, to go, remember how we had slides <coughs> previously? We'd go over that whole slideshow under that article. And then, and the board, and we'll go over some business, you know, slides too, like you have in the past, we'll divvy it up. Um, but we do that whole, essentially 35 minute presentation early on in the actual annual meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I'm saying to you is, is, and remember, everyone that votes on the budget <coughs> has to be there that night. Right. So I, the in, only difference would be if you decided to hold a whole other informational meeting, separate of the meeting in, in person, would be I, what, what we were planning. We have one district do that in Stratford. They held it on Friday. They voted on Tuesday. We had two people show up. We were originally going to go through our whole presentation as like a dry run to just practice, but the board chose <coughs> to not do that based on only two people being there. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it lasted about a half hour and there was a back and forth question 
around uh, actually they had a question about how food service worked right and uh, they provided some feedback on wanting um, more all-wheel drive type vehicles running back roads for buses um, and actually <coughs> we didn't talk much about the budget at all that night um, Tara. Tara. we don't actually have that article in the morning well that's not good I just read through the warning again <laughs> So I um, did not realize that it was doing a presentation um, on the night of voting was a separately warned thing. We've always done a presentation. We can do a presentation. Okay. Typically, there's an article that says to hear reports of the board. Okay. And that's where we snatch it. We can still do a presentation. You can still do a presentation. Okay. But are we, not like, so are we suggesting that we don't, our informational meeting is combined as part of our well i don't know i'm just asking the thing. i mean we're going to have the opportunity with everyone there that's <coughs> voting to give them a presentation and to really dig into it so i don't know based on that i just don't know how many people will come to the pre-informational meeting if it's anything like strafford too <laughs> yeah right and yeah. um I, you know when we were looking at dates it seemed the only appropriate date would was um the <clears throat> like two weeks before. Well, like or I talked to Lindy. I mean, you could choose to hold it down Monday. I told her certainly Sarah and I could handle it. We could give Lindy the Monday the off. Before. Yeah, the Monday before. But I think that's a tough ask to have people come out two nights in a row. No, no, I'm talking about the whole week before. The first Monday of April vacation. The 24th, yeah. Lindy's not here that night. No, Lindy's not here. That but that I am and Tara is. Right. Um, well, what, let, let's discuss this. What do you guys think about um, having a, a um, informational meeting um, a separate night earlier, a week or two earlier, um, or to just have one one informational meeting right before the it was a discussion and, and our annual meeting with the vote um, <coughs> just on that May second. <clears throat> I thought it was a good idea up until you said there was only two people. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the only place we held one, right? So I can't, yeah. I can't compare it. We we didn't hold one. Um, Rudd did hold a brief 30-minute one actually on the Thursday of their regular board meeting. So they took like what you would do out if it was the Monday before. They chunked out part of their normal board meeting and said we're going to focus on that. And what did we get, Ray? I don't think I was at it that one. Right. Tara, do you remember? Two I think people? we had 12. <clears throat> no, 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 no. <laughs> but I could see on screen because I was virtual. No. All the board members <laughs> plus a couple. Yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. There was only yeah, one yeah. public. Yes, yeah, so I think there was 12 public. in the room total. Hey. Oh, okay. Um, so, a few. <laughs> it's, it's a close call, but in some ways, the annual school report is the informational meeting. It has all the documentation from the warning to uh, all the reports from our key players, starting with our chair and graphs and, and arrows and um, to explain what we're trying to do and the impact. Um, so in a way we've done that. Um, and I don't think we should feel bad about it. If that's the case, and uh, giving the logistics this year to go from there to the the annual uh, school meeting on that Tuesday in May, I guess it's May second. Yeah. Um, I think um, we do have an obligation, and I think it's very important when we get to outreach that we um, look at avenues. Um, on, I'm big advocate of the Herald. Or somebody told me nobody reads the Herald anymore, Bill. But I think if you're over 55, you do. And uh, so the letters to the editor or a longer piece there would be helpful to to point out uh, some of the major accomplishments that's happened under this administration this this year. Um, so I guess I'm favorably inclined to. Uh, utilize a report as our informational meeting and move right directly to um, our school board 
meeting on the May 2nd. <coughs> Justine, do you have a, an opinion on it? I think I'm on the fence about it. I, I originally liked the idea of the meeting, you know, the separate meeting, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'm thinking about it. I'm not quite sure what I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was, no, I, I agree with Bill now. I mean, because I, I was just like Justine, I thought it was a great idea, but it's all right there. And if somebody has any issues or questions. Yeah. And if it's well, that, you know, people get to see what it is ahead of time. It's no different than having two. Well, I do think it's important too. This is a change for us. <coughs> We've had Australian ballot meetings, so I think one of the things we got to really emphasize is this is the meeting that This is the vote from the floor, right? Yeah. Um, which is what it was when we originally. Which I do, I did worry stuff. about if we had an information like it were informational is what they've seen in the past, and I were I would worry like do they think they're doing an informational and, and then, then going to vote, not realizing yeah. they're going to come again, right? I just. And that's my concern is getting people out twice, you know. Or that the only people that are come out are people that want to complain. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. We've well, got like, solid stuff here, yeah. you know. Well, we need to see people to support it. Yeah. To uh, inform and then motivate people to come to the meeting on, on May 2nd. But we also have a, um, an Australian ballot for candidates for the position. Right. Um, and that's the day, same day. Same and day. so in some ways it's somewhat easier to say it's all May 2nd. That's what I'm yeah. You vote Australia ballot for your candidate if you don't like, or you have a vote, come and vote. It's at your town office, seven to seven, whatever the case is, or nine to seven, I think it is. And then make sure that evening yeah. you come and again, um, be able to ask your questions about the budget and um, everything else like that. But that's somewhat, easier than having three kind of pieces of this puzzle. That sort of was my worry, that it could add a level of I confusion. think you're right. Mm. Tara? I just wanted to share, there was some confusion already on behalf of your town clerks, um, and I discussed with both of them because they were not familiar, particularly in Rochester, of the split between what you're voting on from the floor and then what you're voting on by Australian ballot, because apparently there's also another vote happening in Rochester that same day um, that they were going to be piggybacking on the school vote May 2nd. So I do know there already was some confusion and some of your town clerks had had some feedback from community members about both um, from the floor and the Australian ballot vote. Well, I think I'm getting more and more convinced that it would be easier for our community to just have our um, annual meeting on the one night and not have these three moving pieces that they have to figure out which one am I supposed to go to. That's my biggest worry. Um, I would <clears throat> like as she since I, I would like in both of our towns us to put up a poster that said make sure you know meeting tonight to vote for budget so when the people come in and they might be thinking that they're voting for the budget or or any confusion yes. just totally eliminate to vote tonight come to the <coughs> in-person meeting tonight to vote on the budget um i think would just help uh clarify also um i'm assuming there there's directions in it's here the first thing just there it's in the same spot yeah because we had yeah. directions last year so like okay, changed, how do you do say, this <laughs> it's changed to say that like article whatever article that is voting for yeah. um school board members is Australian ballot and then it at the top it so it divides it into two sections to vote for articles one through ten yes okay I think is what it is yeah that's it's great. too it's folded in, in our annual report it is it is it is, it is the first page big, after big, the big, table big, of contents. right which is exactly where it was in the last <coughs> book which is read just right away this yeah. is how your voting instructions mm -hmm. I do and, think bold and it's bold and then it also says that if you look over to the back, okay. yeah, you'll have it on the back it here. It says it right up top. Too. Perfect. Yeah. Um, that Jessica. I I agree with you all on doing you know the simplest thing and the meetings. Um, but I think one of the concerns we had when we were considering this was was the tax impact on Stockbridge and doing the informational meeting in Stockbridge. So those that may have these types of questions, um, you know, have some time to ask them and a week to think about them. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of, of 
probably no informational meeting. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like <coughs> JC, I'm a bit on the fence about it because I'm trying to be sensitive to the difference in the tax impact on each town. Um, but um, I also, you know, it could be a good time to convey the confusion of where you have to be to place your vote too. Um, you know, we don't want that to be a backlash after the fact where I didn't know I had to vote, you know, um, I didn't, I didn't know this was something I couldn't go to the office or I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going over the fence now that I know what I know now, but um, just food for thought. This was, I think one of the reasons why we were considering it in the first place. So we just, I think need to be sensitive to that. That's all. <laughs> How are we um, going to get organized between now? It seems like the annual report is pretty well set and ready to go to press and be mailed and everything. So how do we organize between now and May 2nd? Uh, we've got a lot. Of, one of the challenges is, as Jessica mentioned to <laughs> Justine, about how do we do everything possible to get the word out? Also, what can we do to make sure that we not only inform people how they can express their views, whether it's a candidate or a budget, but why it's important to support this budget and this program and this, these candidates. So uh, it seems to me that it's it's, it's, we need some teamwork and organization between our side and is it, is it Tara's gonna be your lead on, uh, or who it is at the central administration? So we just kind of keeping the same. Are you talking page. about like the pre our presentation or just like letters to the Herald or? I'm talking about both, the presentation that's- So Tara uh, will Tara. put the presentation together. Typically she shares that with the board yeah. and with the principal yeah. and with me. And then we work on that together. Yeah. And we assign slides and you know, you do meet May 1st. I think it's an opportunity even at that meeting to just <coughs> fine tune in your presentation. Yeah. The presentation piece. As far as the coordination of getting information out to voters and things, we certainly leaned on our, our coordinator of communications, Kate McLean, and we certainly can leverage her to get things in the Herald. We even did a special little one page mailer, for example, in First Branch, because it was an article specific on pre K, which was supported. Um, so we can certainly um, work with her to navigate some special letters and things in the, in the Herald. Uh, the board being agreeing to write a letter, I think you did that last year. I thought that was powerful. Yeah, I think, because my thinking is that uh, we should have, <clears throat> almost starting next week, um, a series of letters um, about what's happening and why and why it's important and um, why we're asking voters to support and how they can support by voting directors and voting for the, the actual budget. Um, uh, that's one thing. Um, as a candidate, I think, um, and candidates need some letters of support. Um, we cannot take that for granted. Um, and I don't know what the um, situation is in Rochester, but as in my <laughs> career, it's one thing I learned in the political arena is to not take it for granted. So I think people need to be understand that who's running and why. And I take responsibility because I'm a candidate. Um, and I'm going to be asking and working with some of you to, and others to help with that. Um, what I'm not good at is the whole social media <laughs> and whether, uh, what we should do there. In fact, you talked about this, Patrick, about how the pros and cons of Facebook, but that's where the communication coordinator and some of you that uh, I'm in the dark ages there about is are there vehicles there how to tap what those? we've leveraged is again all we can do is communicate facts yep. like when the vote is reminding folks that you vote on on um you know your elected officials via australian ballot we'll keep, we can push all that out through social media and also through <coughs> at least school families through blackboard connect um and so that's what we did in my other districts is 
text messages reminding folks of the meeting. Um, and again, I'm only getting school families with that. No, that's, that's the only means I have, but that we definitely leverage. <laughs> we, we cannot ever come out and say um, vote yes. We can. We cannot as a district. We cannot use district funds to say vote in the affirmative. No, but um, individual boards. Yes, the board absolutely. Can, we're not spending I'm just time. reminding yeah. everyone. Right? You're never going to see a social media post from us. Through. Got it. Okay. I'm wondering whether we could work. You can kind of help coordinate. I certainly will give you my thoughts on that of how we spread the word. And, and to me, it's what, when, and who's going to do it. And I think we could lay that out pretty quickly, you know, if, especially with the Herald. We've got X number of Heralds. Uh, they publish on Thursdays. we got to get it in on Monday by noon. Who's doing what and why? And, and um, My plan was to try to, at least from my standpoint, see if the Herald was willing to just do an interview on the R set upcoming election for me to try to get some headline around um, the upcoming vote. That'd be great. And get some clarity, like yeah. a story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and now everybody will be getting this about a week before the meeting. It has to be 10 days. 10, 10 days. So that, you know, um, that'll be good. That gets it right on their, on their plate, right in front of their eyes. Absolutely. Um, OK. Um, the voter verification for both towns the the town clerks are going to be present at our <coughs> and they're I aware the i need the um board of, board of civil authorities there okay and you're you're coordinating yes. all that okay wow huh. and um the moderator is that something that we as a board uh ask for a moderator is that yeah i mean i it's work yes okay. we've tried to recruit someone to okay. moderate um in rochester we've used um, Dan McKinley, um, we've used Ethan Bowen. <laughs> um, I would recommend let's, let's just asking one of yeah. uh, Dan McKinley or what, as see oh, Can you reach out to him? Yeah. It'd just be good to know <laughs> yep. um, that they're there, yes. And, yeah, the board chair has either recruited someone or I have if I've known someone that they've okay. done for now, but I don't know um, Dan. Okay, I can do that. Um, Thank you, Amy. Okay, so we've circled back to whether we should have an informational <laughs> meeting or not. I, you know, does anybody have any strong feelings either way? Is the problem is the thing? Um, I hear every what everybody's saying, and I have gone back and forth with it as well. Um, I guess. I would say if we do it, we should have our presentation ready mm -hmm. and deliver our presentation. I don't think yes. we should open it up no. just to this. It should just be the presentation, yeah. exactly. I, I just agree. think that gives the whole narrative. That's that's what we're doing. Right. We're presenting and, presenting and then presenting the questions that can be asked. Yes. And my recollection in Stockbridge going back to 2006 was, I don't recall an informational meeting, but I do recall an extensive presentation before the vote right which we will do under terms of the budget else article. to explain what and why and how and how come and um and in fact that generated some questions I mean, and that we can't just be it did its job um and i think so i think that's we're not being inconsistent with past practices um well, that i'm familiar with also um the point that um, to vote on this budget, people have to be present. So if somebody has a question or an issue, then they, to for them to to vote on it, they have to be there and let them to come to the presentation. Um, you know, rather than coming to the presentation, getting their questions answered, and then maybe not coming back and voting. And, and we're gonna do a dry run the night before, right? No. No. I mean, well, I said you could. You could choose to at least look at your slides that Monday night. And assign so maybe it that's when if people want to chime in virtually. But, or... but would we be answering questions off? I, I would suggest not. Right. Maybe that's I would not just to the presentation. Right. Do that. 
after public comment. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to make sure that our parents are aware of when and how important it is. Um, they're the ones that have the most direct stake in what we're all about. And hopefully <laughs> to be able to have them come and, and support their schools. And how we do that, I'm not an expert, but it seems like the PTO and O's and uh, what else um, can play a role here. Um, that's, that's really important. Nobody has a higher stake. Okay, so if so I could chime in, it's sort of, can I just piggyback off of what Bill just said? You know, if we don't do the informational meeting, we really should make a plan to follow up on some of these other items that we discussed, like social media announcements, um, a letter to the paper, and um, Jamie mentioned the blackboard. Um, yeah, that's that's fantastic. Maybe, you know, um, the day before, you know, a blackboard message that you have to be at the meeting to vote. Um, you know, that will reach every parent. Uh, um, maybe it's too late for those that might have questions, but um, as far as getting the word out, if we don't do the informational meeting, we really should follow up on, on all of those items. Well, I think the point is though, our, our annual meeting will be a time for questions. Yes. It, we, it will be a time to come and ask questions. Absolutely. And the Absolutely. plus of it being asked there is everyone that's gonna vote, that's here's the question, and receives the answer. Right. That's what I think is so powerful, right? Yeah. Like the power <laughs> of having an in-person vote is an opportunity to inform the people that are gonna vote that night. Oh, that's true. So every question that is asked and people have questions and ask them, everyone sitting in that room that's gonna vote gets to hear the conversation. Yeah. I, I totally and, agree. And I, I, I will say, <laughs> no, in, I think in think first branch where I was, I didn't know if pre-K was going to get voted in. I do think that taking the time and we had a 30 to 40 minute conversation and went to paper ballot because they we couldn't <laughs> tell um, by cards and then eventually passed by a pretty decent margin. I think it got support because people fully were able to understand and grasp all the nuances <laughs> of public pre-K there that night and then use that to inform their vote. Where if I think if we had just had uh, information, some of those questions would have been asked and not asked the night of the vote. And then some people who heard those answers <laughs> wouldn't have the opportunity to hear the answer and say, oh, it really is being funded a whole FT by Head Start, right? Like <laughs> hearing that talk through, I think helped. Absolutely. The factual. I mean, that's the positive power of town meetings uh, historically is that people can walk in the door thinking one thing Right. But unless they're just locked in, everybody learns <laughs> and they kind of grow and, oh, I didn't know the power of being able to have a presentation so they have some data and information to work with is invaluable. Um, so I think we're doing the right thing. Yeah, I think we should. Um, that would be my recommendation is that we just have our annual meeting on May 2nd <coughs> and we do the information presentation piece, <laughs> have a good discussion and then vote that night. That'd be my recommendation. Let me get a thumbs in. I would do it to vote on it? No. Okay. You don't have to. I mean, you can make a motion to hold one. <laughs> but you could get a poll, straw poll. Okay. I'm going to do a little straw poll of, of um, having the, the only meeting that we're having uh, is the annual meeting that is on May 2nd, and we'll provide. There'll be information and presentation and discussion and then a vote. I think as long as we follow up with our informing procedures, I, I'm okay. I, I can. Great, well, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy with the fact that they can, they will get information, ask questions and vote right all in one place. And then if they don't come, yeah. they don't get to do any of it. <laughs> right. I not to be a dead horse, but I've got all these town meetings and um, on the general municipal budgets, which are smaller than ours, but uh, in Stockbridge, we have a, a sizable percentage increase that's much larger than what we have here. There was no presentation information at all. So it all had to be people asking questions from the floor. And it ended up being voted 
unanimously, but I think we're doing the responsible thing. We're <coughs> plastering things around about what and where and why, and then there's going to be information and access to decision makers about why are you doing this, how why why is it so high or low, or whatever. So um, I don't think we should be shy about saying that we're doing the responsible thing. Uh, so I think we are. Great. <coughs> I'm going to jump in on my other name as a stern. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Well, then let's move on to the um, Zach Ridge Central School Solar Project. Yeah. Um, so I did get some information as far as cost associated with the master electrician. Um, it's probably about a day's worth of work for them. So you're looking at. Oh, anywhere, you know, probably a thousand dollars um or less. Um so with that and then the structural part with the roof, Frickett did say she um she had said um she did a walkthrough. Um there was a facilities assessment done. Um, completed by Black River Design. Um, the structural engineer that was subcontracted as part of the facility study, uh, Engineering Ventures, they're out of uh, Lebanon, also did a walkthrough and brief assessment of that roof. <coughs> um, so their findings would be in the facilities assessment report, which I don't know. Yeah, I do. The Black River. Yeah. And then uh, she only had a hard copy of Black River report. Um, she didn't have it with her when she wrote this, uh, but she did say, looks like the, their pre-manufactured trusses, and a lot of times um, when it's <laughs> off, the, they'll omit the two by fours, which sounds like they were cross members that just go across the trusses essentially, so they might have to be added, which isn't really a huge ordeal. Um, yeah, you're talking probably a couple guys for a few hours, you know, um, and then so she, she so basically, long story short, she said if we allocated about a thousand dollars for her services, we would be um, we would be good with that. Oh, and then the other question was the. Um, Inverter. Yes, the inverter. And it sounds like it's both. So four four years of approximately four years of life left in the inverter, four years of warranty left. Um, and from you know my experience, you're looking at a few thousand dollars to replace an inverter. But I wouldn't say that that <coughs> is just gonna turn off, you know, or last as long as it lasts. Okay, so um, we're looking, the, the estimated cost was about $6,000 for the system, um, and then another 2000 for, um, or one for the elect master electrician, one for engineering fees, so about $8,000 um, is probably what we're talking about for this, for this project. Great, what is everybody's thoughts on this? Does that come from a... From our capital fund, or, yeah. or where's the, or, or we have it embedded in our budget? I forgot. We haven't That's allocated it yet. yet. It's <laughs> not currently embedded in that. But budget we do fund. have a capital fund, and we're in our budget is the um, True. allocation <laughs> of sixty-five thousand dollars of a expected surplus that's going to go into capital. And one reason we have the capital reserve fund is for things like this. So. We have that option if we want to utilize it. It seems to me, and I think it's it's just I think it's neat. Great. Uh, any other comments, <coughs> Justin? Or... All right. Um, well, <laughs> we are looking for possible action on this project. I can't do anything. Anybody want to make a motion to go forward with this 
the uh, solar project as presented. Hi, Nathan. What? Go ahead. No, I'm saying for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peter um, I make a motion to move forward with uh, the installation of a donate donated solar um, system from Deborah Aldrich. Um, to be installed on the roof of the Stockbridge Elementary School. I second it. Oh, excellent. Is there any um, discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Nope. Five is saying aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Patrick, thank you for yeah. uh, coordinating this. Um, Deborah will be very pleased. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Okay. Maybe we'll have a little ribbon cutting or something at a time that we can celebrate in some way. They need to be able to turn it so that <coughs> But I think it's just me. I also think, Wendy, it might be a good what solar and what solar power. Boy, we can do um, earthquake proof buildings. Um, we can understand what's, what's going to be built on the roof. I think that's just me. Excellent. Um... <laughs> okay, moving on to the mentor mentee program for new board members. I'm not sure if that's something you're involved in, or is uh, that directly, something for Jamie uh, to? Uh, um, be? I gave him some suggestions, but the whole idea is that effective boards make a difference. Yeah. Ineffective boards make a difference. The difference is one's positive and one's negative. <laughs> and one of the things that we learned from a presentation uh, by Phil Gore through uh, Vermont School Board Association was the idea of having a, a, a more formal entry educational mentoring program for new board members. Yep. And part of that uh, is to have a document that they can read, absorb, and have with them as their job goes on, we've all felt that, gee whiz, if we knew more, we could possibly contribute more as board members. <laughs> and this is to help close that gap between, gee, I, where am I? Where, what am I doing? All that, a lot of that is right here in this handbook. And I, I think this handbook is something that can grow over time. Um, I'm a notebook person, so I'd love to have, just put it in a notebook where they could uh, members could, whether they adding policy statements or whatever they want, a little budget. Um, but this is this is core stuff, and I think it's. Um, um, yeah, I think it's great. It's, it's taken it has yeah. taken a long time um, to just figure yeah. out like what am I supposed to be doing here? What? But I just want to caution that there's so much information to make sure to keep it um, as a, in a simplified format so that it's not too cumbersome for, for somebody to want to dive into it. Yeah, that's one thing that I think <laughs> the committee did Good. Um, that I appreciate. The other thing is that this is information, but we're also giving a helping hand through a mentoring program where mentors uh, not from the same board will be mentoring new board members throughout the SU. And so the person saying, what? <coughs> what? You know, or help, yeah. help me here. I don't even know where first base is. So you, um, so that's the, the power of that, having a relationship and a contact person to help them get through um, uh, the start of their journey. So great. That's great. That's good work. Great. Uh, is there any other questions, discussions, comments? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to um, the uh, RSA Facebook um, board's prior use of Facebook communication for communication. Um, Jamie was going to dig up. Yep, so we talked about it. Okay. Um, so the last time we talked about it as a board um, was in our December of 2021 meeting. It got brought up when we merged our school Facebook pages to be one Facebook page, did we still need to keep the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District community way? I'm not saying that full page, right. Um, but did we still need to keep that? And then it's got moved 
to future agenda items and it never was a future agenda item. So here we are, it's a future agenda item just a couple <laughs> years later. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and so this we did, we came through, but so there was no actual action taken on that question. I believe Justine had posed the question originally and then here we are um, circling back to it. But so what was the, what is the Rochester Soccer Unified um, District Community Facebook page yes. that has this at the yeah, top? That one, okay. <laughs> We were, we were called out online essentially saying that we weren't using it and well i was scrolling through it and yeah we're not using it like everybody else does every day to take pictures of their food yeah, but yeah, um, yeah but yeah i scrolling through it i actually found that um it was like a community bulletin board it's not really an interactive kind of thing which facebook maybe sometimes is it but you know, it gave links to people to go places to get stuff. It talked about um, preschool or kindergarten right. registration. I mean, so the only thing I'll say is no one active on the board is an administrator of it. No one associated with it. Like, I'm not an administrator Who's of it. Who's the administrator? Um, I believe it's Megan Payne. Megan Payne still. Yeah, okay. when I dug into it. And then also the concept. I think I am that, one. I think I can be one. one. I, mean, yeah, I, I was added when we left. Yeah, I struggled to figure that out. Definitely tested my social media skills. Um, so I, was like, I don't know how to figure this out. Right. So our question kind of before us now is what what use do we want to have of this Facebook page? Um, is that kind of what, what the discussion is? Well, you've never really identified any social media as a form of public of publishing board information. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we don't typically put our board agenda, but we did put the warning up there to start to get information. But um, even when we looked at our reorg meeting in June, you guys did not pick social media as a posting place. Okay. So it's kind of all those things in one, right? And the, right. the thought is that school business should go through our school Facebook. Does the school have a Facebook? Oh, right, what? Rochester Soccer oh. Facebook page. No, you're saying website or? We have a website and a Facebook yeah, page. Yeah. Oh. So like that's kind of, right, Justine? Am I, am I, I, I think you were one of the ones who originally posed questions. <laughs> yes, you were right. <clears throat> yeah, Stockbridge Central School. Um, yeah, I just, I, I just wanted to figure out what we all thought because and I don't, I keep, you know, I don't think that it's gonna, I'm gonna stop getting tagged in things. So I, uh, I just want to figure out how to use Facebook the way we want to use it. Right. I mean, here we are coming up to our annual meeting. And, um, and so, um, we're talking about what are avenues to get it, getting out there. Um, but you're also saying we have a school page, but it, would it be appropriate for us to, to, Put an announcement on the school page about the um the meeting coming up i mean yes we i'm let yeah. me jump in please do tell me. <laughs> sorry i'm not uh i'm listening to another meeting oh right sorry yeah. uh, and i wasn't uh <laughs> early in all in on all this discussion but we post stuff to the our sub page every week right pictures announcements uh and my understanding and or concern about uh, the community page, if I can call it that, is that um, board members can't interact outside of a meeting. And so uh, the, mm -hmm. the communication coming from the district should flow through the school onto the official page. So if we use it as an announcement page, we could do that and just shut the comments off. That's a good idea. I think shutting the comments off is a good idea. I think that's the, I mean, if we're going to, it's all about how it, yeah. someone who's tried to figure out how to shut off comments on, on I've Facebook. Yeah, I've done it before. It's not as easy as one would think. Yeah, yeah. You have to, there's a difference between a page and mm -hmm. on a, there's a difference between following and mm -hmm. liking it. Um, so I'm not sure if this community page has that capability is honest. I would have to dig into the community page a little bit more and it's formatting or Justine, maybe you can, I'm not sure I can see it. I'm not. I hear exactly what you're saying. Thank you. That, um, yep. the board cannot have interactions mm -hmm. with, with people commenting on the, the Facebook page. We, 
But I think our um, initial thought was just to be able to, like a bulletin board, just put mm -hmm. out there, mm -hmm. but not we were not able to receive or answer any comments. Um, so maybe that is not the right place for us to, to, to post stuff out there. Now that we have a website and, and we do have another avenue of Facebook that, um, because I, I know a lot of people are on Facebook. Restaurants have their menus on Facebook. It drives me nuts. Yeah. Like, <laughs> put it on a website. <laughs> it's um, true. Mm -hmm. uh, I love so that. I think that as long as there, there is a Facebook option that we can still post yeah. Um, that'd be my thought, uh, but I'm you not can, uh, on Facebook very much, so, or ever. You can set it up <laughs> so everything has to be approved before it gets posted, in which case you just, like, not approve anything, <laughs> you know? like if I Comment-wise? Is that what you mean by that? Comment-wise? Yeah, yeah. Anything, okay. or any post anybody else wants to post. If they want to post some sort of I have to go through like that. Make a post, like, yeah, like spammers or something. You can have or, like yeah, third or party. Cleaners. Hey, really, mm -hmm. it could just be we can post it, I approve it, and then anybody comments, I just don't ever approve any of it because it's not allowed because we've decided that as a board. Right. It just seems like a lot of. It's th we have 353 followers. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a lot because you just ignore the every all the requests 163 excuse me i mean <coughs> i think that seems easy if we set the setting that way require you know approval i that, that this page is specific for <coughs> um posting announcement from the board and we are not taking any comments come to a meeting <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean I just direct them to go to the website. The website's great. Like people <coughs> should be going to the website and not through the Facebook. That's not. Yeah, that's but, just, yeah but you can drive them to the website. Sorry, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Jesse. <laughs> people are on Facebook all day long, every day, all night long, every day, and the things will come up so they see them more often than actively choosing to go to the website. I don't go oh, yeah. and look at websites most of the time. Yeah. Right. Almost never. I will never. I mean, I go to that. I just go there all the time. Menu the on a website. I will look at their <laughs> mm -hmm. Facebook page and I'll look at the right. menu. I, I don't look I, at websites. I, I, it's just in my face. I'm like, oh, look at their mm -hmm. menus right here. Cool. You know, I think we'll reach yeah. more people with Facebook, but if we can control the discourse, I think that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's about it's, driving the website through Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. I, mean, you know, I think that's perfect. different. And then people yeah. go to the website, go to the website and just keep driving links to the website. Or they yeah. just, ch yeah, they click on Facebook and they end up at the website. That's a different thing. And that's what I did, was it a month ago when you kind of got called out, Justine? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, go to the website. Come we, to a meeting, know. go to the website. Yeah. yeah. I I feel comfortable with that that we keep yeah. we keep this stock the rochester stockbridge unified district community web um facebook page we use it um to post announcements oh um <coughs> and we we provide the link to to our regular page where they can find more information a regular web page where they can find more information um and it is not a platform for commenting we will not comment out and we're not receiving any comments come to a meeting, reach out to us uh, personally. So help me, is what we're, you were just talking about this community Facebook <coughs> page, our side, is that different from the current Facebook presence we have with that uh, it goes through our schools? There is our, a Stockbridge one. There's a Rochester Stockbridge Schools Facebook, Facebook page. And that's what you goes to you. I'm just yeah. wondering, the power of Facebook is uh, when people have questions or concerns, um, they can voice them and they can get answers. Um, the way we're set up uh, is that individual board members can't really facilitate that. What the forum is our board meetings where people can come in and ask and and suggest or, or, or oppose. And then we as a group can take action Right. Either that night or agree to do it or anything. So in some ways, it's misleading to have a separate <coughs> board Facebook page if we can't do what it Facebook is really designed to do, which is having two-way conversations. Our 
two-way conversation as a board is through these meetings. So I'm wondering whether um, everything gets shuttled to our our side <laughs> Facebook page. Everything just goes there immediately, and uh, they get their information from that. Um, and and um, we can continue to say if you've got questions or concerns, uh, here's the board schedule, and and please come in and articulate whatever the case is. But I just find it somehow weird that we have a Facebook page, but we can't do what people might want us to do, which is to either <laughs> whatever. So that's I'm, I'm so I mean, I'm do we... that. why do we even need one if we're not going to be able to? Well, have we have more followers than the right. Well, I see the, I see the value of using yeah. it to information I mean, out. So I mean, if we say we have a, our meeting and then we need to post the minutes, can't we just but can't we do that through? Through what? Our our side. The school one. The school one. The school. Okay. Isn't okay. everything what we do is yeah? I guess yeah. It's confusing. Yeah. It's too it is confusing. I think we don't need the our side one, and we can just post stuff on the schools one. I've always yeah. been confused about that. Why there's two? And I think why the advantage two. of using the school one is it also drives home what we're doing at school not right. just information if you get to mm -hmm. there's a lot of pictures that go up there there's videos yeah, there's okay. yeah. yeah. Might, i mean it kind of keeps it a little more kid focused yeah that's, that's true too. yeah, yeah. So right. it's, it's a way of having a celebration of learning every time they, they yeah. connect right. yeah okay. um they yeah, scroll through and go oh gee I, I know mary lou and then you well what's great about it too is like with any Facebook page, when when you see one pop up on your news feed, you will then click on it, but then you'll look at their past ones. Yeah, so yeah, you'll see the more. things that yeah. Lindy's posted. Rather somebody somebody might That's go really there because point. we're announcing a meeting, but they're going to see what the kids are doing. That, you know, okay. yeah, I think that's great. Sorry, they're saying my name. Look at me. I think the the community page had a really important role in the the genesis of the merger but none of the other boards have pages these days none of the other district boards within the su yeah it's interesting so yeah. I, I, I would personally in my role professionally support uh, yeah and i agree it. all of what we were just talking about that um you know, maybe it did have an important role when we were bringing governance together and people together, but now we're together and we're about kids. We're not about- Well put. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. All right, so I don't well, know how you shut down or move everybody from, from that, that Facebook page over, but- Justina, are you an administrator of that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so I, I think it, yeah. we would do have to take action on that if, so if the action would just be, you know, that like you're, accepting a motion that we will post all board meeting, all board, any board information. Exactly, on our Rochester Stockbridge School. So Facebook. could Justine just make like a final posting that it's gonna get shut down and, and for any followers to, we, you know, we strongly- Yeah, to move to on and put a link. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, links to the school pages. They're not already following. Yeah, In the once you make the- Website. Yeah. And the website, I do like yeah. the website, I agree with you. Well, I move I think what, what, what Lindy on. said. Okay. <laughs> What's that? I move what Lindy said. Is there a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, any discussion? All right. All in favor? Six months, yeah. five by saying aye. 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 Take in. I want to yeah, thank no. uh, Patrick for bringing this up and Justine for being our administrator. I didn't know that all the time. My gosh. <laughs> so, uh, I was like, I um, don't even know. Justine, don't take it personally that we're taking this power away. Oh, <laughs> no, I don't want it. I was like, I, yeah. I <laughs> that's why I said it. I felt bad big, for it. It's a big deal, really. <laughs> <laughs> it was different when I, I was when it was more active and it was merger related, you know. It was different then. You know, like no, I think that's confusing. I think this is the wise way to go. Great. Okay. Um so we will move on to board development study book. I did not bring my book. I had a busy, busy day. Yeah.
I don't feel like we did, you know, with new members. It was it was interesting to read because I feel like this is one thing that we could get better at. Yep. Yep. I feel like I read this and then I kind of used it at the um, the meetings for the the member handbook. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's kind of in line aligned with <laughs> basically that entire handbook. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. One of the lines in this coherence chapter, governing with coherence, is the fact that we, <coughs> what, what unifies us is this, this vision uh, of mission, um, this overwhelming um, uh, concern and uh, commitment um, to learning and the students under our care and supervision. And that's ongoing. But the other part of it is this duality they talk about because it's, but we have to be open for change. So it isn't like we've, okay, we've got the formula, we've got this, and we're not going to do anything else. Uh, what the authors were saying, you good, really strong, effective boards. This comes from Jim Collins from a great book called um, Good to Great. Um, phenomenal book, no matter whether you're in private sector, nonprofit, or public. And, uh, but uh, we can't be afraid of change and we have to be open and proactive kind of <laughs> to, to continue to, to move, to be effective. So even though yeah. we kind of kind of have a comfort level in what we believe in that relationship, we've still got to be moving and change can be at times uncomfortable. And another point here is uh, the question is, well, what do I do when um, I advocate something and the board votes the opposite direction and the, the answer is that you know, we're a team and uh so we move forward and we do it civilly and 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 for the positive thing so it's it's interesting stuff um i like the expression a rubber stamp conundrum yes <laughs> yes and that's the other thing it was really interesting because they say gee i just seem to be rubber stamping everything and the authors were saying if you our job is to make sure we've got a talented superintendent and the superintendent builds a talented team and we reinforce and support that team. Well, if all that's happening, then it's natural for what they're proposing is something that we'd support. Yeah. Um, right. So it kind of flips the thing around. Uh, no, we're not rubber stamping. Yeah. Um, we have a role that we have to that have accountability and staff has to be accountable, <laughs> but it's that's useful and i think i said earlier from from this was the whole idea of trust being just the the glue trust of ourselves and trust in the team that we're overseeing um i get a lot of comfort uh, we don't walk on water by any means but i get some comfort reading each of these chapters that we're it isn't like a foreign language it isn't something like we're going right right we were like we're kind of doing this jessica yeah, I, when I was reading the part about the trust issues, it kind of brought back traumatic moments of being on the Act 46 merger study committee um, oh. because there were people from boards all over the districts and everybody was untrusting of each other on <laughs> who, you know, what, what the end game really was. I mean, we all had a goal in mind to figure out how to merge, but everybody had different pathways on how to get there and nobody was comfortable with each other because they thought, oh, this person just wants these kids to go here and this one wants them to go there. And it was really, really difficult. Um, you know, the, the experience being on this board, I can see everybody's, you know, got more comfortable with each other, more trusting with each other that, you know, as far as I can tell, I mean, you know, like there's nothing about hidden agendas, you know, um, you know, with some of the delicate issues that we, we'd still have to deal with. Um, but yeah, it, trust is a big deal. I mean, the example they brought up in the book, I think, was about like candidates running against each other and then being on the board together. So they spend all this time going against each other and now they have to work together. So they have to sort of rebuild the trust. Um, right. But there's other instances where trust may not be you know, like the multi board, like the, the full board, the, you know, the SU wide full board, um, you know, people coming from different boards on that one. I can see where that can be tricky. That, that can be really tricky. And it's something to keep in mind. So it's really, really important reading here. Nice. Uh, uh, no, just one thing I thought 
I was important was when you know a new member comes on um, is giving them a chance to to you know speak their <coughs> values and I think as a whole board like it says here to you know to go over the values of the board the moral imperative the strategic goals so I noticed the importance of like our retreat mm -hmm. it almost seems like a retreat needs to be in line with a new member as well because i feel like as a new member to just get thrown into these meetings you're almost a little too reserved in having a voice because you, you feel like you're under the spotlight whereas at a retreat we're all getting to know each other it's more open uh, dialogue we can discuss our goals and I think, idea. I think when we have a new member come in I think that that's important to, yeah. to take a chance to do that. yeah so we, yeah yeah the nice thing is you guys reorg in a time of the year where it's yeah. really easy mm. to jump into a retreat yeah mm -hmm. yeah I mean you're really gonna be reorging in June yeah so it works out well nice just the way it, the main meeting right. falls. Yeah. 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 Excellent. All right. Does anybody have anything else uh, for the uh, our book club? Uh, and the next chapter is da -da 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 -da. chapter six: governance culture. Okay, culture. Culture vulture. Oh. <laughs> is it? It's okay. I'm still good. I like still that. Good discussion. I like that. Still good discussion. You and I have that. In we go way back. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is over or under. Okay. I was wondering if uh, I read the wrong chapter. Oh God. <laughs> That's so good. I read the right one, but you still brought up some very good points. So. Patrick grew, grew up on Vulture Mountain. Oh, uh, uh, man. Excellent. Uh, do we have any new hires or uh, resignations? Okay. I, I meant to say all that last month. <laughs> Okay, great. Do we have any public comment? Okay. Um, so our next regular meeting is um, Monday, May 1st. And we're going to have that as a regular meeting with a regular agenda. Yep. And then we will Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we will have our annual meeting. Yes. Great. And do you want us to be there early? So we kind of get our... Marching orders or anything. Yeah, I'll I'll what's your there. advice here? We'll probably be early. talking throughout the month as we get a I little mean, closer. That night, you mean the annual meeting? Yeah. I think if the board's there at least a half hour early, that, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, we'll certainly be there. You guys bringing me cake? I'll be there yeah. at Is six. Is it your birthday? <laughs> Oh, excellent! I'll be there at least an hour. Oh, oh man, I think I think we I think it fell on my birthday last year too. What a, what a way to spend it. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully we can give you a good birthday gift then. Um, One of the things that we did in another district, and I'm putting Lenny on the spot, which is like my rule not to <laughs> do, is we did hold a community dinner um, for families and, and folks that were interested um, prior. It's a little trickier because we vote from the gym. Anyways, and then we provided childcare. That might be something that we look into <laughs> doing and publicizing out. That was, amongst yourselves. that was yeah. effective yeah. Um, to have some food prior to the meeting. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it, even it's even a little potluck type thing, you know? Yeah. So anyways, I'm chewing on that. That might be something that we offer. We did it like, again, they voted at 7. Dinner was from like 545 into like 630. Um, and then we transitioned to the meeting. Okay. Or just have some. You don't want any hangry people. <laughs> well, that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think when we think about um, families, like the, trying to navigate dinner for families right. and then get to a seven o'clock meeting can be really oh, challenging. Mm -hmm. So we were really focusing in on how could we try to support our families in attending to have kids, school age kids. I like yeah. that. Yeah. We'll have that at the hearing anyway, right? At the public meeting? That's yeah. a child care? Yeah. That's, but I'm wondering about yeah. trying to navigate some food prior to. Great. Uh, future agenda items for Monday. You will get feedback on those slides. Yeah. You're going to get a social, I think it's social emotional data report. Academic. It's academic data report. Okay. Okay. On track my progress. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Great. Well, if anybody comes up with anything about the month, so let me just talk to the community meals to oh, there you sponsor go. something. Maybe. That's interesting. Be a good way to get, get that uh, out there, too. That's true. All right. Well, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. All right. <clears throat> All in favor? <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.